It's Cujo time. Hi again, everybody. I'm Bill Coates, and welcome back to a 2013 high school football season as the John Tyler Lions prepare for their season opener on Friday night in Lufkin at A. Martin Stadium against the Lufkin Panthers. And, of course, Coach, of course, Coach Rickland Holmes is back for his second year. The Lions got all the way to the state semifinals one year ago. An incredible game against Denton Geyer that still kind of bugs me a little bit. But uh, <laughs> just moments away from the state championship game, but still it was a great season. And what a great group of seniors that really just, I mean, before we get started on this year, just one more time, what a great group of seniors those guys were. Huh? Oh, yes, most definitely. Anytime you have uh, 14 to 15 guys that sign yeah. uh, collegiate scholarships to go play football and uh, continue their education, that's always a good year besides going 13 and 2 and going to the semifinals. But uh, you, the, the, you don't forget those guys, but on the other hand, they're gone and you got a whole new group coming in this year, right? Uh, that's the belly of the beast when you're playing uh, high school football. Uh, kids are going to come, they're going to graduate, and uh, you got to move on to the next crop. And just so, far, just so happened this next crop is pretty good, just like the last one that just left. So I'm excited about the 2013 season. You were, were talking before we started this interview. I mean, this, is, this has gone on for like the last three great quarterbacks at John Tyler, Jeremy Johnson, David Bush, and Greg Ward. You know, those guys all moved on. And what were the fans saying to you? They all had the same deal. You know, <laughs> hey, what are you going to do now that Jeremy Johnson is gone? Right. What are you going to do now that David Bush is gone? And then when Greg, after last year, what are you right. going to do now that Greg is gone? Well, after the 2015 season is over with, you'd be saying the same thing about Gio McCollison. Now what are you going to do that Gio McCollison is gone? Well, what you do is just reload, right? That's it. No such thing as rebuilding. You just take a, another, another group, good group of kids, and you build on that, and you reload. And tell me about Gio McAllister then. He's got big shoes to fill, doesn't he? He does, and he's a big kid to fill up some big shoes. He's 6'2", 200 plus. Uh, he has a great arm. Uh, his decision-making process is getting better each day. And uh, he can move. He can run. He's very mobile. He reminds me of a bigger version of the guy that beat us in the semifinals, if you look at him. Yeah, well, and that, uh, that kid, uh, the Denton Geyer quarterback, yeah. uh, great kid. But, boy, what a game that was. But Greg Ward was every bit as good. He was. In my opinion. He was. He uh, was. And then most definitely that was a great game between two great teams. And, uh, uh, and if you looked at the game, you looked at the other side of the bracket, you just knew whoever won out of us and Guy mm -hmm. was probably going to win. I thought it was a state yeah. championship game, and yeah. it was. They went on, Guy went on and won the championship. Yeah, it was. It was. And, uh, you know, hats off to them to going and taking care of their business that last year. But, you know, it's 2013 now, you know. We all on the same playing field right now. All right, now before we move on, we got to show these. The, the, these are the brand new helmets. Yeah. Now, now the, the white one and the blue one. What's uh, what do you wear? One one week and one the other. What's the deal on that? Well, it just depends on you know what mood what, you're in. What mood I'm in, and uh, <laughs> whether we're playing out of town or we're playing away. Uh, with our seven home games, we'll be alternating the blue and the white helmets with the uh, the blue jerseys. You know, every so often, whether we wear all blue, whether we wear blue and white. And you going to do that blue on blue again this year? We are going to do the blue on blue oh, again. Man. But it'll be in the playoffs, though. That's a playoff deal. That's okay, a playoff. Right, that's, okay. on, that's only the Cujo jersey. Oh, okay. All right. The that's Cujo only the Cujo jersey. jersey. Okay. Uh, because during the regular season, we have our regular white and blue jersey, except for the blue one has a little bit more black in it than normal. Um, but uh, as far as that, uh, we're pretty much staying pretty much traditional. We're going to make sure we keep the line on our helmet. It's just on one side now, and I just extended it and made it a little bit bigger, kind of like the Boise State deal. Yeah, okay. And on the other side, is going to be real big numbers. So whatever number that they It'll help is, anyway. Yeah, whatever number games, that, right? that, that, that uh, player <laughs> is, you, you'll be able to recognize them because they have their big number on, on the left side of the helmet. Now, the lion looks a little different. I'll, I'll hold this helmet up because I think we can see it. Now, uh, this is not the leaping lion. It's not the leaping lion. It's the you head know, of the lion. The head of the lion. Because we are the king of the jungle. Okay. <laughs> and that's what it represents. It represents the, the king of the jungle. You know, you, you can't do anything without the body, without the head first. Okay. So. All right. Now, but, but, you know, in the past, they've tried to go from to the off the leaping lion. People have complained about yeah. that. I mean, that's... Yeah. You know, that's Cujo back to the 90s. I mean, yeah, but you if got you look at that last that. line that they tried to put on there without the leaving line, he was a little friendly face. This guy <laughs> right here is a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. looks like he's kind of angry, doesn't he? Yeah, about the last that? line they had was, was <laughs> they called him the friendly line. Friendly line. Yeah. And you don't intend to go into games being friendly, no, there, right? No, we're not going to be friendly. Uh, <laughs> not with the defense that we have right now. We're pretty ferocious up front right now. So. Well, let's talk. Okay, let, then let's start on that side of the football. I mean, uh, your guys the last couple of years uh, – have been just a, a turnover producing machine on that side of the ball. Plus, this kid named Tyus Bowser, I seem to remember him, 
sack and the quarterback, how will this group look this year? Well, if you look at them on paper, they, they're supposed to do just what everybody else has been doing. But uh, right now they've been practicing hard. They've been playing even better. Uh, they're very aggressive, and they're pretty disciplined. They're, they're a little bit more disciplined this year, a little bit more into the, the technique side of the football game. And uh, you got Jasavia Reese at one end, and you got Darius Amy at the other end. Darius Amy moved from the outside backer to the end position this year. And then you go in the middle front where we have three great defensive linemen right now. Two of them are sophomores, and one of them is a senior. Uh, Trey Moore, Braylon Jones, and uh, a guy named uh, Leonard, uh, Pierre Leonard. And uh, he came to, from Chicago last semester, at the beginning of the last semester. And he's a pretty good kid. And then uh, you go to the linebacking core where we got in the middle, uh, and Andrew Clark. And veteran got, guy yeah, coming veteran back. Veteran guy coming back. Malik Hubbard, another guy that played last mm -hmm. year. And uh, Jalen Reese, another guy that played last year. Jalen played as a sophomore. Malik played as a junior. So uh, you look at those three guys right there along with DeAndre Benson that's going to be in the rotation of either the Sam or the wheel backer. And uh, if we put them at the Sam or the wheel, now you put Jalen Reese at the mic. So... So uh, you like this group then? I like this group. I like this group. And then you got you got the, the veteran safety in the back, Terry Osborne. You put him with a guy that played sporadically last year, Greg mm -hmm. Johnson, <clears throat> along with uh, uh, Isaac Warren that mm -hmm. played at corner last year on the other side of uh, Darren Flowers. Very talented. Which he'll be man. missed. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you got guys that, you know, it's going to be coming and stepping up. Uh, now a new senior, uh, Bryson Crawford. He'll be playing a lot this year along with Bryson Gibson. And then a guy that we have that was a senior, this year that's coming from basketball. He started out playing as freshman in the sophomore year, missed out last year, and that's a Jordan Caldwell. He'll be coming back this year. All right, so the offensive side of the ball, again, it all starts with the quarterback in this offense, and again, you've had a run. Jeremy Johnson, David Bush, Greg Ward, all those guys have gone on to play college football, mm -hmm. every one of them. Jeremy Johnson's playing wide receiver at SMU. Bush is at TCU, right? No, he's not at Monique State. At McNeese, McNeese State, State yeah. I'm sorry. Is he playing quarterback or receiver? At he's McNeese? playing everything. Playing McNeese everything. McNeese. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's right. part retired, kickoff returner, oh. offense, defense. He plays it all right. More now. than capable of doing all he's that. He's more than capable of doing it. I and, promise you that. And, and I, are, is Houston going to play Greg Ward at quarterback? Yes. Right okay. now, he is a second or third string at quarterback right now. I just, and I, when, when all that was going down last year, I'm, I'm thinking they're talking about playing him at something other quarter. I'm going to know this kid's a quarterback. He yeah, is yeah. smooth, smart. Yeah. Got a good arm. Great arm. There's Great no reason not process. to let him play quarterback. And he understands exactly what to do back there at the helm. And that's why Houston, they, they understood that they was going to make him a quarterback. And they understood that from the jump, and that's what they're sticking to. Will the offense change at all with McAllister? No. We still going to spread it out. Uh, you may see him run a little bit more than we did with Greg because of his, He's a of bigger his kid. stature. Right. But uh, other than that, we're going to keep our offense just like it's always been. Spread it out. And we got some great skilled guys to throw it to, starting with Rodney Bendy. Uh, Nicholas Kane, which is also our backup quarterback mm -hmm. this year. Uh, you got Jeremy Wilson. He played a lot last year. He did. Uh, then you, you throw in another young guy, which is a sophomore this year, uh, Devontae Gross. Uh, he'd be coming in, had a phenomenal freshman year, and uh, had a great spring this year. And now you throw him in there with uh, another two sophomores, Quaylen Brown and uh, uh, Katie Henderson. And you look at those guys there at the wide out position that's going to be playing. And now you look in the backfield with a uh, Reggie Gibson. You know he's a returning guy. You bet. Played a lot last year on that 2012. Made some big season. plays last year. Yes, too. he did. And uh, you have behind him uh, Dyron McDuff and uh, Michael Bledsoe. So you look at that them skill position that we have right there. We're pretty solid. But we have a lot of depth, and we can rotate those guys in. And we have a lot of experience up there from those guys that played on the varsity level last year, besides Devontae Gross. And then the offensive line. Again, you've been able to uh, really play with a quick... Duntavian. Yeah, yeah, well, you've been able to play with a quick group of offensive linemen. Some of those kids have gone on, but you haven't had to... They, some of them haven't been terribly big, but they've all been fast. Yeah. Well, we're pretty big up front this year. Are you really? Uh, you okay. You returning back Polito, which was a starter right. last year at guard. Uh, now you take Attaway, Kendall Holmes, both of those, I know Attaway's yeah, big. I know, his, I know guys, his family, yeah. Both of those guys played on the varsity level last mm -hmm. year. Uh, you throw in uh, Adrian Harris, a guy that played uh, last year as a freshman. He'll be a sophomore this year. And uh, you throw in Tavares Wilson, which played at the JV level, got a lot of great game experience, and he's a be a he'll be a senior this year. 
What about the coaching staff? Uh, you had a pretty stable run. What uh, Have you made any changes this year to the coaching staff? Well, as far as the coaching staff, we had Jamie Moore. He left, uh, defensive back coach, special team coordinator. He left and went to Conroe Oak Ridge with uh, uh, Coach, coach Derek Rush. Okay. Uh, we also had a coaching chain with uh, Coach Gerald Norman, which was one of the freshman coaches. Mm -hmm. He's going to Jacksonville to coach the cornerbacks. Uh, and then uh, I brought Keith Guthrie to be the new head freshman football coach. Okay which he's a John Tyler alumni. John Tyler guy, uh, you bet. Brought in two secondary coaches to take over the role of the secondary this year. The coach of safeties will be Coach James Cavett, and the coach of corners will be Coach uh, Richard Reisner. They'll be coming in to do that. Uh, another freshman football coach that I added to the staff, mainly to replace Coach uh, uh, Norman, was Coach uh, Marcus McFarlane. Brung him from the Houston area, and uh, brother he, Michael he, used to be the principal, brother, right? The principal. Yeah, he used to be at John Tyler mm -hmm. High School. I brought him to add him to the staff, uh, but you know, for the bulk of it, my coordinators are still there. Uh, Coach Antoine Bush, offensive coordinator. Coach Barry Anderson, defense coordinator, and uh, Coach Jones was just coaching the running backs last year. He'll take over the role as a head JV football coach and a special teams coordinator. Of course, Barry's been around a long time. He's, he's been, been, he's been through th at least, I think, three head coaches, I yes, think. He, you know. yeah, he He's outlasted a lot of people <laughs> at John Tyler High School, principals included. <laughs> but uh, then, you know, uh, I, had, I had to bring back a guy that uh, I think, you know, he was on – he was – he, he thought he wanted to get away from the game, and he figured out last year that he didn't want to get away from the game because he spent a lot of majority of the time on the sideline with us on game day, and that's Coach Michael Johnson. We brought him back this year. Okay, all right. And all he's going to do is coach football. That's a great thing. Okay, so he's not – he's he's retired from the – from the classroom now? Yes, he retired okay. from the classroom. He's a full-time uh, football coach this year. Well, you, Michael was part of it. Might as well give it a plug. Uh, uh, was part of the uh, 1973 John yes, Tyler State, State Championship, which is – this is the 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, going to do anything to honor those guys? Well, yeah, this year? Uh, we we've already started the process mm -hmm. on working on a couple of deals to do with them uh, for one of the home games that we're sure. going to have, like, kind of like I did last year with the '94 team, mm -hmm. present them with a plaque. We just got to make sure we get everybody in line and uh, know exactly what date is going to be. Have everybody out there so they can enjoy the festivities just I, like everybody else. I'm sure they would. That would be great. All right, let's roll tape on some uh, the scrimmage. The uh, Lions and Longview, uh, two old rivals, got together Friday night at Trinity Mother Francis Road Stadium in the uh, final scrimmage before the start of the season. That's always fun. Lions and the Lobos, that's some pretty good football. Here you are on defense. Yeah, at defensive front, as you can see, uh, they're, not, they're not giving up too much on the front line, you know. As an offensive coach, when you coach an offensive line, you say you want your guys to create a new line of scrimmage. Well, uh, that defensive front, we put it on their shoulders right now that we want to make sure that there is no other line of scrimmage. And uh, as of right now, you know, going through the spring and going uh, into this first scrimmage, they've been doing a great job at that, being disciplined, taking care of their responsibilities. And they're in pretty good shape right now, you know, with the conditioning program we had this summer, getting them in shape, uh, a lot of them, Understand that you know there are going to be some long drives that we're going to have to withstand, and uh, they know that they got to be able to handle out and carry out the assignment. That's another. That's the young corner. Well, he's not a young corner. He's a senior this year. Bryson Crawford uh, played a lot on played a lot on JV last year. Got a lot of great game experience, and he's ready to play at the varsity level this year. Step right in. Yeah. Here's that good end zone shot that we like so much. Shows you really a good look at what yeah. the play looks like. Then on the offensive side of the ball, as you can see us lining up, you know, like I told you, we're going to spread it out. That's Geo at quarterback. Yes. Throwing it to Nick Kane right there, uh, another versatile receiver. Like I said, he's our backup quarterback this year also. So you'll be seeing him sporadically back there uh, catching snaps also. He's a very physical and quick kid. Uh, understands what to do with the ball in his hand and makes some great decisions out there. Yep, he's he's a very talented. And here's the end zone version of that. Again, what do you call this particular play? This right here is just a screen. Just a screen, bubble screen, just right? Just a bubble screen pass. Picked up about 15 yards on that play. Oh, yeah, we did. It's a great run right here by Reggie Gibson. Uh, put a little size on him this year, bulked him up, and he kept his speed, which he already world-class speed from the jump. Uh, now you add that with a little bit more size, makes him more durable, uh, so, he, so he can last 16 games. 
That's a 16-yard pickup there, it looks like. Um, yeah. I'm sure the recruiters, uh, are they on Reggie pretty hard oh, yeah. already? He's, he's a top recruit right now. Uh, as far as the senior class that we have, along with Terry Osborne, and Trey Moore, and, uh, Darius Amy, a Andrew Clark. This is the young sophomore right here, uh, Duntavian Gross. Okay. Uh, he's turned on, and uh, he practices and plays just as hard. So... Uh, and he's the wide receiver, which he's is a, a slot receiver. for yes. you, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> very talented young man. Very quick cat-like skills. Now you can see it from the end zone here, just how yeah. quickly this play develops. And he's wide open, isn't he? Yeah, he's wide open. He just uses speed to take it to the end zone. Going the other way. There's the bubble screen again. Who's this? That's Nick Kane once again. Like I said, once you get the ball in his hand, it's, you just never know what's going to happen, you know. Uh, you know something good is going to happen, but you just don't know how good it's going to be. Would it be a fair statement? I mean, you played for Alan Wilson. You guys pitched the ball, didn't throw it much. Didn't throw it much. Um, is the, has this kind of taken the place of the the old pitch to the tailback? Yeah. yeah really? That's what it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's like running scat. It's just a pass play instead <laughs> yeah, of running play, though, it. right? I mean, I mean, you throw it behind the line of scrimmage just like we pitch the ball behind the line of scrimmage and uh, get outflanked and let your speed take over and run the ball. It just shows a little bit of Geo's versatility in the pocket, making some things happen, you know, when protection isn't as good as normal. But i tell you one thing about this offensive line. They've done a great job against this really, really good defensive front from uh, Longview. Now, Geo is a junior, right? He's a junior this year. And again, it's one of those things that I've that you've been able to really do well the last few years. You've been able to bring in a junior quarterback, and those kids have had two years. Mm -hmm. Two years. Of Jeremy, develop. David, and, Gr and Greg all yeah, had same, that same thing, same, didn't they? Same, same yeah. steps, same avenues that they had to go through, uh, and they all, you know, a difference between him and those other guys is they played a skill position right. on the varsity level before they actually became a quarterback. Right. Like it was a slot wide receiver. That's right. All those yeah. guys played something yeah. else. He's been a quarterback they? since he stepped on campus, so yeah. he hasn't played anything. Yeah. It's another good pass play to Reggie Gibson. Just kind of sneak him outside and, you know, spread out the defense a little bit. And we find a hole with him with his speed. Deep ball. Yeah. Who's who we got here? That's just Reggie. And what we've done, we spread it out to an empty set. There's Reggie going out to the, in the slot right mm -hmm. there, right? Nice. Get a look at the defense a little bit. Yeah. I love the penetration that we've been able to get with these these front four guys. You know, they protect them back three linebackers real, real well. And uh, we're understanding that uh, we have gap responsibilities. And again, this is Longview. They don't throw the ball over the lot no, like other uh, teams do. They run, they line yeah. up and try to run over you, don't they? So and that, you're going to run into teams like that. You just got to out physical somebody yeah. like that. You got to be ready for them. Everybody's not going to be fancy. This is a young running back right here, Michael Bledsoe, carrying the ball. And now you got Nick Kane at the quarterback. And Nick's a junior, right? Nick is a junior. Nick's also. a junior. So his future, Nick's future, I mean, he could do a fine job if needed to play quarterback, but his future is probably on the, what, defensive side of the ball or the offensive, offensive side as wide of the receiver? Okay. As a wide receiver. All right. Uh, he's, he's doing probably, both for you, but, I mean, as a college player. Yeah. Nice block on the edge there. Yes. And he's a really good corner, too. I so know he you, is. You possibly could see him play corner yeah. this year, so don't be surprised. I was going to say, you've got him on the depth chart as, as a cornerback, too, right? No. Not as a starter, though, right? No, not as a starter. Not as a start. Okay, all right. Here he is running. But I know he's talented, all right. This is another young, young sophomore, Quaylen Brown. 
getting to getting to carry the mail a little bit. He's another running back slash inside slot receiver. Very quick, very versatile. You'll be seeing a lot of him on a return game. Michael Blesso carrying the ball again. This is a a family member of Kendall Hunter. So okay. if, if you see him running and making a couple moves, like <laughs> him, you can kind of compare it to. Yeah, you'd take another Kendall Hunter, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, sir. You know, the heck of it is, you've had some Kendall Hunters come through. You've had yeah. a, a, some great ball players come yeah. through the last few years. I know that one group that we had that went to, uh, I think, the second round of the playoff, our second year there with Coach Rush. Yeah. Uh, Keordrick Black. Yeah. And, uh, Chancellor. It was two real good running backs that we had. They along. were good. With that first year, we had Ramonte Hampton. That was pretty good. Mm hmm. With Nick Kane carrying the ball, catching the ball, and carrying it again. Another quick screen. Get him out on the perimeter and let him make something happen with his feet. And there the Lobos are going to run it. Good play on the edge. That's Bryson Crawford again, the senior. Good job with Trey Moore staying at home and doing his responsibility. Like I tell them all the time, you know, discipline, di being disciplined is what's going to mm -hmm. separate us from the rest of the, the teams that we play because everybody that we play this year is going to be athletic, you know, and it's always the discipline team that beats the athletic team any day. A little athleticism doesn't hurt, though, does yeah, it? A little athleticism <laughs> doesn't hurt, you know. <laughs> but, but when you have two athletic teams <laughs> going on each other, one that makes the least amount of mistakes right, is one absolutely. that's going to take over and win that game. And that comes from being disciplined and being committed to doing your assignment the way that your coach should do it. And that's what we harp on them every day. Take care of your assignment. Take care of your responsibility. That's nice playing the open field there by one of your DBs, right? Actually, it was linebacker. linebacker? It was Jalen Reese out okay. there on the perimeter. Your weak side linebacker. Yeah. One thing about Gio that's done helped him to develop, that's the big 6'4 junior receiver right there, Rodney Bendy. Okay. Uh, one thing that's done help Gio develop into the quarterback that we're going to need him to do is his mechanics. And this know. is Gio back in the game, yeah. right? His mechanics have become amazing, you know, as far as what Coach Bush has been coaching him to do and uh, making sure that he understands the offense as a whole and not just what he needs to do. Here's the end zone look, and Bendy, Bendy's 6'4", right? 6'4". He's a big target, big target. Yes, he is. Of course, Fred Ross was a big target, too. That's yeah. kind of that same mold, right? He's a right? very, very strong kid. You know, if you look at his stature, you know, he's kind of a frail kid, but he's really, really strong. And he's going he's gonna to make some big plays for us this year. Did he this play is, basketball, too, this yes. year? Yeah. Yes, he so. does. This is Isaac Warren, another all-star basketball player. I, mean, mm -hmm. he, I think he was newcomer of the year. Yeah, Ike's, a, Ike's an athlete. Yeah. That's just Xavier Reese, the 6'4 defensive end. And uh, with his athletic ability, uh, he, he'll be one of the other top recruits that's going to come out when, when he becomes a senior because he's a junior right now. So. Carrying the ball right here is uh, Jeremy Wilson. Nice play. Guy that played a lot of varsity football last year. And uh, he. Uh, He's a tough kid, and uh, once he understands what he needs to do about football, he's going to be another one of those big playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Did you come out of the scrimmage healthy? We did. No injuries. No injury. We came out of spring with no injury. We came out of two days with no injuries, and we came out of this scrimmage against Longview with no injuries. Depth yeah. was a problem 
at JT for a while. Have you kind of solved that problem? I mean, you can never afford to lose your, your best guys, yeah. but you remember we talked about that. Yeah. I mean, there was a time I think, there where it was really, it was pretty thin. I think we, uh, we had that problem because we was trying to make kids go just one side of the ball. Yeah. But, you know, last year, making those kids go, go both sides of the ball, mm -hmm. it created depth in position that we really didn't have depth. Like right. corner last year, we really didn't have a lot of corners. But when you look at Darren Flowers going both ways, you look mm -hmm. at Ike, you look at uh, being able to throw Fred out there at right. corner. You know, now you create depth with guys that mainly would be on offense that can also play defense. What kind of a test is Lufkin? I mean, they are a, you know, they're just a fun, I mean, I an old what, rival. I mean, that's they on the road, no yes. less. Luffin going to test us, uh, I believe, in the secondary. They have some great per perimeter skill guys, kind of like we do on the mm -hmm. offensive side of the ball, and they like to get it out there to them. Uh, they have a big playmaking quarterback. They're very elusive, but uh, he's not trying to run the ball. He's trying to get it out there to – they got a, a receiver, I think, that has an offer or a very strong interest from Texas A&M, and, &M. and uh, he's really good. He's uh, cack-like uh, quickness. And uh, he can make a lot of good things happen with the ball in his hand. Do they have any Des Bryant's running around down there? Not with that size and stature yeah. like Des Bryant. I think they have a lot of smaller guys that are really, really yeah. athletic, quick, and uh, physical. You know, they have a big front def uh, a defensive line and offensive line. And uh, they're able to move the ball when they do run it, but they try to pass it and get it out to the perimeter. You're probably not the favorite in the district this year for the first I time. I am not. <laughs> you know, uh, going in the last that house year. That house wears that title this year, don't yeah, they? Is yeah. that okay? You going, cool with that? Going in the district last year, you know, everybody <laughs> had that idea that, you know, it was going to be in between us and White House. Right. Well, this year, they just hand out, just gave it to White House this year, which is fine with us. You know, uh, it's kind of like when we started out the year last year. You know, we really didn't get the respect in the state. Right. like we did in our district, mm -hmm. you know, and we had to work our way to that. And we understand that, you know, there's always going to be a target on our back, but at the same time with that target on our back, uh, we, got the, we got the ammo, we have the firepower to protect ourselves. Yeah, but that, you know, it's, it's okay to be the underdog occasionally. Isn't it? Yeah, no, most definitely. Coaches love that kind of thing, I understand don't you? that, I understand <laughs> that. You know, uh, I tell my kids all the time, we talk about this every year just yeah. like we did last year. Just because you start out on top don't mean you're going to finish on top. Right. You know, uh, you have to work your way either to get there or you have to work your way either to stay there. And just so happened this year, we got to work our way to get there. All right, in the last minute that we have, just talk about just the general feeling, the excitement of starting off a new season in high school football. It's always exciting. You know, uh, getting ready to go Friday, travel to Lufkin. Uh, hopefully after that game, we're 1-0. Mm. And uh, just knowing that everything that we've done up to this point has prepared us for Friday. You were a rookie this time last year, rookie I was head coach. A I was a rookie. Don't feel like a rookie anymore. I'm not a rookie anymore. I'm a veteran <laughs> now. You know, going into my second year with a with a, a young team, uh, I think that is very capable of winning a whole bunch of football games. I think they're very capable of going 16 games. Uh, the deal, like I tell them from the jump, is we have to make sure that we stay disciplined, we got to stay healthy, and we got to be smart about everything that we do. All right, Coach, good luck. Appreciate it. Again, the first game is uh, coming up Friday night at A. Martin Stadium in Lufkin. 7.30 kickoff on News Talk 600 KTBB. Looking forward to another great year. Hey, the first two games are going to be great. Lancaster comes into Rose Stadium uh, a week from Saturday night, and then, of course, the Robert E. Lee game. So uh, the non-district part of a JT schedule is going to be pretty tough this year, as always, and uh, the Lions deserve and need your respect, as do the Red Raiders. So both teams looking forward to a fun 2013 season. For Coach Holmes, I'm Bill Coates. Thanks for joining us.